we are fortunate to be living such a comfortable life. So immersed in our privilege, we tend to take for granted that we can choose what we want for dinner, and that we have a home to go to at the end of a long day. For us, these comforts of life are almost a given. We tend to forget that for the majority of the human race, each day is a struggle. We forget the simple truth that we are the most capable of improving the lives of those around us. It is within our power to guide this change. I am a musician and I am a classical vocalist. Uh, once me and my husband were waiting for an auto rickshaw to come and uh, we saw two little children smiling and playing on the footpath. This footpath was not a very good place to be at. It was full of flies, it was um, full of all the leftover food. And uh, but still, like something in me asked to go there and just say a little hi to the kids. And we went across the street to and um, met the children, and they were all very ready to smile and talk to us. That footpath happened to be right outside uh, our building gate. We would go off there, meet the kids, and then uh, carry on with like whatever our work was. So I think that's where the starting point was, like right? saying a hi and giving, exchanging a smile with the kids was the starting point. One day, I just went to them and asked them to come at my home, have some meal. And uh, uh, it was a very important event, I would say, for both of us, for me and for the kids. Why? Because we have a lot of inhibitions before doing such a thing. And like, it's always very um, difficult for us to get strangers at our home. And when these strangers happen to be some uh, not so clean street children, it is all the more difficult but then we had to break that ice and for the children also they are so very used to their environment that getting into a cleaner and a socially acceptable society is also a very difficult part for them. In the way in which the world is structured today, there is a divide between those who have opportunity and those who do not have opportunity. When I talk about opportunity, I'm talking primarily about the ability to leverage resources, cultural, social, economic resources, in order for an individual or a group of individuals to advance themselves in the world. We're talking more than just being able to survive uh, but in order to project themselves into some place into a future, a future that they themselves would like to be in. Resources are a finite good, and as it appears to be, there is a widening gulf between those who are able to marshal those resources and those who, who cannot. For quite a while, things uh, happened very spontaneously. Like they came in and they did whatever they want to do because uh, they started coming so very regularly. We thought to uh, thought of structuring the whole thing. So now it is uh, the, their routine is something like this: they come, they brush their teeth, have a shower, uh, they have their meals, they pray. Uh, then there is a little bit of um, studies and uh, fun together, and then they go to their school, their respective schools. <laughs> So, can 
The world today is structured in a way that aids the exploitation of the less privileged. Our everyday actions contribute to this exploitative system in direct and indirect ways. We can begin to address injustices by questioning our community's function. Unfortunately, some people who are privileged don't recognize that they are privileged. There are lots of people in using this society who work just as hard and who are getting nowhere because structurally they are at the bottom of the pile because of their race, because of their gender, because of their socioeconomic status. So hard work is not the only variable in success. You have to be given opportunities and privileged people have far more opportunities. Whether or not we're aware of it, our ability to live with a certain level of comfort means that we don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from, where our next payment is coming from, to how we're going to and where we're going to raise our children. And that once we start having the ability to meet our basic needs, we see that if we are crafty, if we are creative enough, we can marshal the resources that we do have to generate more resources. So if you're starting out at a certain level of privilege, there isn't the opportunity to leverage what you have to move forward. But if you don't even have the basic level, and by basic needs, talking about things like a secure place to live, guaranteed meals, a, a community that's free of certain levels of violence and antagonism, the ability to consume at a most basic level, even things like clean water. If you don't have those, then you're not able to look beyond the immediate basic survival needs. These kids live for the moment. Like they, they have a meal today, but they don't know whether they get a meal in the evening. But that doesn't make them uh, sad or doesn't make them tense or they are already happy with food, without food, with home, without home. And here we are with all the comforts and luxuries for us. But still we always have some excuse to be sad and to be feel depressed about. But once you start being with these kids and they, they can be happy with just say a shower or um, a little ice ka bola or anything that is just very ordinary for us makes them happy. So you also start seeing the happiness in ordinary things. And that is the biggest lesson that we have learned from them, to be happy. Justice exists in every single society, east, west, north, south, it doesn't matter. Whatever gives you the privileged position, whether it is your class, your gender, your sexual orientation and sexual identity, whatever it is, you have access to all kinds of opportunities that you can then use to even to grow more, to get better, to get wealthy, whatever your goal these opportunities are available to you. In the interest of making the society more just, those of us with the privilege have to get up and do something to help the underprivileged. And doing something means not handing them something for charity's sake, but empowering them, giving them opportunities so that they too can become part of the privileged group that in turn feeds into helping other underprivileged. So we keep 
a cycle going that pull people out of poverty, pull people out of all these negative situations, put them into positive situations so that they can turn around and help others. And the more we bring, the better the society. We can't and we don't live on our own as human beings. We are a part of a, a community, a unit of some sort, whether it be our family unit or a community level neighborhood unit or town or village. We learn pretty early that within our family unit we have responsibilities to each other. Then we leave our family and then we go out into the wider community and we learn that we have responsibilities to each other and, and the circle keeps widening and expanding until it becomes global. So it is totally impossible, I think, to really fully understand and appreciate your humanness without taking responsibility for others. who are privileged we tend to see solutions many times in terms of moving ourselves away so if you look we have gated communities because we're keeping those people out but we have to move from behind the gates at some time to go to work to go to have fun and we're going to meet these people and if we don't know them and we don't know how to work with them then we are continually going to be afraid of them. We are going to be demanding laws that punish them rather than help them. And then we become part of the same old, same old exploitative, horrifying system that breeds more and more people who are so desperate that they resort to illegal avenues in order to make ends meet because we are not doing anything to help them. We are punishing them for, 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 for consequences that they did not entirely create on their own. One of the ways that we can increase peace is through increasing trust between individuals. And the only way that we build trust with individuals is or with others is actually interacting with them uh, and it's not just enough to to interact with people who are like you you have to be able to show trust and compassion to those who are not like you in so many ways whether or not it's because they don't live in your same neighborhood or that they don't live in your same nation or that you know they don't work in your same workplace um, trust begins in those interactions across differences. Just taking a moment out of your schedule and saying a hi or passing a smile can make a lot of difference in that cycle of selfishness. And you start uh, seeing that connection, you start feeling that connection, and you become more aware of the environment uh, at large that surrounds you. So it could be anybody, it could be any stranger out of the street, it could be any stranger out of some other country. Um, the connection I guess is always there, it's just a matter of a moment when we know that that connection is very much there. So human beings can no longer pretend that we're not connected, that we're not responsible to and for each other. Every time a tree is cut down in the Amazon, it affects the ozone layer in America and other places. The oil spill in the Gulf is not just affecting the Gulf, it is going elsewhere. So we have responsibility to each other and we have responsibility for each other because this is the way our world is structured now. We are connected through this flow of, of goods and materials as they uh, tra traverse the globe. We, in America, we can buy uh, strawberries in January, right? There's no reason why we should, um, but by consuming those strawberries, we are suddenly connected with uh, an agricultural worker and a country that's producing those and that country's politics 
that are producing those particular um, strawberries to consume. The other thing that to think about is that through the global flow of media, we are also interconnected as we see and are tied to images um, throughout the globe. So whether it's the 24-hour news cycle or it's getting on the internet and looking at a YouTube protest video or it's uh, being part of the Coca-Cola culture, we have the opportunity to, to see and participate in this sort of global media flow. What are the kids that um, we go learning more? With, the, with that um, connection. Why? Because uh, it makes us it makes us to be selfless individuals. We try to be uh, more sensitive to their uh, problems, to their needs, what makes them laugh, what they don't like. And then uh, from these children, we try to uh, expand it in more and then we see some other few children and then that from uh, there on there is other sick people on the streets and we start to identify not with themselves at this point of time but definitely you become more sensitive to the problems of the society at large. Along with privilege comes power. How does the power that we enjoy put us in a position of responsibility? Because you're part of the problem and you're part of the solution. That's why you must get up and do something. For, for as long as there is injustice, to quote Martin Luther King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So, you may not have started the war in Afghanistan and you may not be responsible for all kinds of things that we can always tell ourselves. We didn't do, we didn't do, we didn't enslave, we didn't exploit, we didn't, we didn't. But people before us did and there are serious consequences to all of these behaviors. And we must do something about it because we should want to make the world a better place for all of us. Up above the world so high, up above the world so high. It is our ethical duty to, to think through the um, actions that we take that might have an impact on others. And this, everything that we consume, obviously, is going to have an impact on, on some community, some place. Um, and we should be making those choices wisely and look at the way in which we can have the most impact for our consumer dollars. You give a handout here and there, but the structural problems are still there. For example, many times when your country gives aid to these countries, aid, the, the aid is delivered in such a way that it stays in the middle classes of the underdeveloped countries and nothing goes down because the policies do not change. The policies are not structured in a way to take advantage of the indigenous institutions, the local institutions, where the people know what their problems are and they just need a little help to solve the problem themselves. No. What you do is you send all these foreign experts in, pay them to set up in hotels and all these things, wasting the money, and then they come up with solutions that are irrelevant to the culture and they are unsustainable because once they leave, these things can't continue because they are not connected in any way to the value system and the knowledge base of the communities. The intention is good, but the outcome is bad. And so good intentions are not enough. Many a times we feel that uh, what the difference my going out to the stranger and giving him food would make but uh, in fact that is the most an individual can do or that is the best an individual can do for a start we don't always all have the opportunity to stand side by side with the community halfway across the world but we can stand in solidarity with members of our own community 
halfway across our city. Don't just look at the injustices that are happening elsewhere, also look at the injustice that's happening in your own backyard. And what can you do about it? Step number one, educate yourself about what is really happening. Get out of your bubble. Find out what is happening. Small thing like if you have your children's clothes, you just pass it off to others who don't have it. Or um, sharing your food. If you made some cake and pastries, you just go and share with the kids that are outside. In your own community, look around. There is poverty here. But some of us don't see it. So wake up. Get connected to the community. Really get to know the people in the community. Or you just go and meet an ailing neighbor. And you just say that you'll be fine and that makes them so very happy and calm. So it's not always about the street children or beggars that we can help. But there are a lot of uh, people in our vicinity that needs emotional support. That needs just a, a word of care from our side to make them feel good about their lives. You can get connected to these people through organizations within the community. But if you get involved at that level, you will find out what the problems are and then you can see how your set of skills match with the need and you make a difference. You contribute time. You contribute money if you have money. But most times organizations need time, people to volunteer to do things to help make a difference in the lives of others. So we need to step out more, get out of the bubble. Oftentimes our volunteering time and energy or our service, if you will, is not put to its best use. There are lots of different ways that that we can use our skills. We don't all have it in ourselves to to be able to provide sustained, committed, direct service, for example, to a community. What we could do is we could find a better use of our skills uh, by volunteering in an organizational structure. You could use your skills as an accountant, for example, to help with uh, preparing budget materials for the for a community-based organization or help writing grants for a community-based organization so that they can further their work. There's lots of different ways and at different levels that we are able to, to provide service. Find the best fit for your particular set of skills and passions. Uh, most of the times, um, people are willing to uh, do good things for the society, but a lot of factors might uh, not let them do or take that first step. Um, I think the first and the biggest problem for them is to get connected to an NGO. But I feel it's not important to be a part of an NGO to be of help to others uh, because NGOs uh, uh, nature of work or their reach or their schedules may not suit everybody's um, routine or it may not fit into the individual who is willing to do something for the society. So you just have to uh, select a thing that you feel that you can do, you can manage to do and uh, you just go out and be open and be yourself to help others. Only that willingness is important. You just go out and start doing the things that give you enjoyment. You start doing things that you feel that would make others happy. I think this is the prerequisite to do some good work. And you are so empowered from these experiences because you know your life takes on an added meaning because you're doing something to make a difference, not to get prizes or praises but to make a difference because you recognize you have a responsibility to your community in the same way they have a responsibility to you. It's a win-win. For a start, one has to be willing, one has to be aware, one has to believe that good actions from one's part can make a lot of difference, can bring a lot of joy to others' lives. What flows from from that starting point will have a, an effect. It's cumulative.
many times people think that problems are so big and overwhelming that they can't do anything, they're powerless. And if you go back to the, the, the whole saying of how do you eat an elephant, it is a bite at a time. Find the pieces, the small pieces, the micro, the whatever, the pieces that are in our power to make a difference with, the part that we can impact and change and improve. That's what we go for. The, 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 the parts of it that match our interests and our skills and abilities, that's what we do. You don't go trying to eat the whole elephant because you want to be the Nobel Peace Prize. We know you want to get into the Guinness Book of Record or some other thing. You do it because you want to make a difference. You want this world to be better for you and others. And so you do things at the small level, the local level, your college campus level, your core community level, because you can make a difference there. passing anyhow if you listen to me my friend do it now do it now tomorrow never comes i tell you yeah don't you think we have enough for our end? So when tomorrow comes With you Give a hand for the needy on the street yeah. These trousers do not fit me It's the same food every day Got a dent on my car Oh, when do I get my pay? Yes, we all have our worries Will you stop worrying now? If you listen to me, my friend, do it now Do it Tune in so hard.